Let's pray. Father God, I thank you. We come this morning just as we are. Joy, sorrow, concern, worry, Father God, we, we give it to you, Lord Jesus. May our minds be fixed on you. May our lives be fixed on you. Lord Jesus, may we abide in you this day. Be our hope, be our joy, be our salvation. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Well, morning, my message uh, title today is very simple. It's a mind game. In the book of Luke, chapter 4, we read these words. It's the temptation of Jesus. He's been in the wilderness. And we pick it up at verse 5. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor. It has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will be yours. Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. The devil then led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered, it is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. The lesson from Jesus for us this morning is, if you're going to do something great for Jesus, if you're going to faithfully follow Jesus, you will be greatly tested. What's going on, Jesus? Help me. Get me out of this. I'm... Jesus says to us today, haven't you read my story? Jesus, it's hard. It's testing. It's a struggle. I, I'm out in the wilderness. I need you. God wants us to do well in life. So we better get ready to be tested. We are tested greatly so we can be trusted greatly. In this time of testing, we we heard it from God's word, we see that the, the enemy comes with all guns blazing. At his weakest moment, he says, turn turn these stones into bread, jump off the temple, make a big show and and watch the angels come and, and catch you. Let everyone know, Jesus, just how fantastic and great we are. Hey, we could sell tickets. Hey, you don't have to go to that cross. Just bow down and worship me. Hey, I'm the devil. I'm the prince of the air. I'm in control. I'll give you control over everything, Jesus. Jesus responds, hey, you don't understand one little thing. I'm going to crush your head. You don't understand. I'm here on mission from the Father. Hey, you might give me a few hints, but ultimately I win. I conquer sin and death and you lose. How did he do it? He did it by the word of truth. And he bound every lie with the word of truth. Don't live by bread alone, it says. 
Don't put God to the test. Love the Lord your God. Worship only Him. Let us declare today God's word and God's truth and God's hope and God's mercy and God's grace because we will be tested, we will be challenged, we will be stretched. How will we defeat his lies, his mind games, these battles with the truth of God, the word of God? Know his ways, know his truth, know his word. It all started in the Garden of Eden, a downward slope. In Genesis 3, picking up around verse 2 for you. The woman said to the serpent, this is Eve, we, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden. But God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. And you must not touch it or you will die. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened. And you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. Well, sort of right. But that's what the devil does. It's sort of right. Sort of okay. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave it to her husband. He was dumb as her. Oh, sorry, no. no. Who... who who was with her, sorry, and he ate it as well. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked, and so they sewed, sewed, yeah, put fig leaves together, and made coverings for themselves. And it's interesting, isn't it? He did not just run right up to Eve and say, come on, come on, come on, eat this fruit, eat it, here it is, it's very tasty, come on, eat the fruit, come on, eat it, eat it. He planted a seed of doubt in her mind. Basically saying, hey Eve, God's holding out on you. God can't be trusted. What would he, he know? We don't really have a clear timeline here. The serpent may have come and planted this seed of doubt and, and maybe Eve had been wrestling a day or two with it, I don't know, a week or, or maybe a month. She's looking at that tree every single day and goes, oh, it doesn't look too bad. The fruit looks nice and tasty. It, it looks good, you know. Oh, I don't know. Maybe, oh, maybe God doesn't have good intentions. Maybe there's something more to find out. Maybe God was wrong. But eventually the seed that he planted took hold and she did what we do. She acted out. She did that thing that she's been thinking about. That thing that had been nagging at her mind. She took the fruit and ate it and gave some to Adam as well. What thoughts have been planted in your mind? What things are sitting there? Is this really true? Can God be trusted? Well, this isn't really working for me. I've got doubts. I've got fears. Does, does anyone care? Does anyone love me? Does anybody listen? Negativity. Don't let those seeds take hold. It's a mind game. Don't let him in. He comes so peacefully and nicely and plants seeds of doubt and destruction. Most of life's battles are won or, are won or lost in our mind. Our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thought. You cannot have a positive life when you have a negative mindset. Who's been around a negative person? Aren't they fantastic? They're the ones you invite over for lunch, aren't they? They're the ones you like to sit at and have a cup of coffee. 
Oh dear, she, uh, she called again. Or he. We use truth to demolish the strongholds. Let us speak out God's truth. Live out his way. Live out his truth. Worry is the sin of distrusting the promises and power of God. Lots of good stuff in the book of Philippians, chapter 4. A couple of familiar verses for you, 8 and 9. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Let us think about those things. Let us focus on those things. Whatever you heard or learnt or received from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Let us embrace his peace. Ask him to calm your mind and to calm your thoughts. What will we set our mind on? What is true? Set your mind on that. What is noble? What is right? What is pure? What is lovely? What is admirable? Set our minds on those things, the excellent, praiseworthy things. Yes, temptation will come. Amen? Yes, there will be battles and struggles, mentally, physically. It may be hard. But don't let it take hold. Don't let it lead you down a destructive, dark path that's void of God's mercy, that's void of His grace that's void of life and hope. We can win the battle. We can win the battle. Deuteronomy says this in chapter 11. Be careful or you will be enticed to turn away and worship other gods and bow down to them. Isn't that true? Then the Lord's anger will burn against you and he will shut the heavens so that it will not rain and the ground will not yield no produce and you will soon perish from the good land the Lord is giving you. Deuteronomy 11, 16 to 19. Fix these words, friends. Fix these words of mine in your heart and in your mind. Tie them as symbols to your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Teach them to your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. We need to change the narrative. We need to change the narrative. For you and I are children of God. He has given us good things. You were lost, but now you were found. You were homeless, but now he has given you a home. You were confused, you had questions, but he has answered them and he sustains you and I. You stepped out in faith and Jesus found you there. Fix his words upon your heart and life. Speak out his truth and win the battle. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.